Are we ready? I think. Let's see. Yep. All right. So my name is Sochi Marian. I'm the school um, based counselor from Valley Community Counseling. Um, I've been a counselor for 12 years with Valley already. Um, I've been at elementary schools and high schools. Um, currently, I am at East Union two days a week and I'm at Lathrop Elementary three days a week. So I just wanted to share a little bit about what we do. We provide social and emotional services for students at MUSD. Um, let's see, sorry, I'm kind of new at this. <laughs> <laughs> with this sharing on Zoom. Um, we support, um, right now I wanna talk a little bit about the support we're giving for families and students during the pandemic. We are, we have counselors available on campus four days a week at East Unions, other schools uh, as well, um, hopefully more. Uh, we're gonna be getting more days. Um, referrals can be made by parents, students and staff. Um, and then we, right now with, uh, distance learning, we are able to meet with kids on campus and also through teams, of course, following proper guidelines. So we thought right now it's important to um, talk about what's going on with the pandemic and how it's affecting our students and the children and actually the whole families. Um, surveys have found, um, there are studies that have found that 80% of students have experienced negative impact on their mental health due to the pandemic. And 20% of students say that their mental health has significantly worsened. So right now we're wondering, when do I ask for help? When do I refer my kid? Um, so it's basically anytime the student's emotional well-being interferes with them doing everyday life tasks. So what we're seeing more of right now with um, the students is um, high anxiety and depression. So I'm gonna give you some examples and what to look for. Um, there's different types of anxiety. Um, anxiety is a natural reaction to a stressful situation, especially now with what's going on. But if it starts interfering with them doing everyday life tasks, then we need to stop and take a look at that and see what we can do and kind of focus on um, you know, the different kinds also of anxiety that there is. Right now, what we're seeing a lot of is social anxiety, um, which is avoiding um, social situations. Um, a lot of kids are not wanting to come out and be around or go to school, especially after the lockdown. Um, generalized anxiety, panic disorder, um, obsessive compulsive disorder. I've also heard that a lot of kids are having a hard time um, because of pandemic and the having to clean their hands all the time and worried that they're gonna get sick. So some of the common symptoms of anxiety to look for is trouble sleeping, um, complaining about stomach aches and other physical problems, avoiding situations for, so in fact, like for social anxiety, they would wa not wanna come to school, you know, avoiding um, and wanting to stay online instead of trying to come back on campus. Um, exhibiting clingy behaviors around parents or caregivers, uh, trouble focusing in class, um, disruptive behaviors or explosive outbursts, and over, overly self-conscious behaviors. Um, depression is another thing um, that we see, we're seeing a lot because of the social isolation that kids are having, um, not being able to go out or spend time with friends. Um, Right now, socializing at this age is very important. So it's important to find safe ways for kids to interact with their friends. Um, some of the common, um, well, depression is more than just being sad or having bad days. I mean, there's days when we're sad or upset, but some of the symptoms we need to watch out for and that are, are more concerned are usual, unusual sadness and irritability, persistence, persisting even when circumstances change, loss of interest in activities that they enjoyed, uh, reduced feelings of anticipation, changes in weight, shifts in sleep patterns, like sleeping too much or not sleeping enough, feeling like tired, um, harsh self-assessment, like saying I'm ugly, I'm no good, I'll never make friends. Uh, feeling of worthlessness, hopelessness, and thoughts or attempts to suicide. Um, that's something that I think is something I'm seeing a lot more of. Kids are not 
um, socializing, not coming out. So they're starting to feel depressed. They're not seeing their friends. They can't go out. They can't do things that they used to. So it's very important to keep an eye on, on those symptoms. Um, and of course, um, the community resources that we have uh, available, there's some of the resources, but if you see any of those symptoms, you need to do a referral or um, I encourage you, you know, to reach out to a teacher, staff, or even us, the counselors were available um, and make a referral so we can check in with the child and then we can um, do an assessment and see um, what kind of services we can provide. And I think I went too fast. But this is, do you guys have any questions? So um, what times a day do you um, generally see students? We can see students all day from eight o'clock to 3.30. Um, mostly, most of the kids want us to see them after or during their breaks, depending on the students. Some students will ask, uh, since we are meeting through teams, they'll be able to chat with us, send us a chat and see if we can meet once they're done with their work also. Do they need parent permission in order to see you? Yes, we definitely, first time we see it, we can meet a child once uh, without permission. So if there's a referral made by a staff or a parent or another a student, we can see the student once. And once we see the student, we need permission to be able to see them. So it's very important to follow through and follow up with that because we are not allowed to see students if we don't have permission. We can get verbal, but we prefer uh, a signed paper. So to, are there things like if we used a recorded version of your presentation right now that kids use to kind of add it to, to identify some of the things they're going through. Are there strategies that they can even start trying at home to help them, you know, reduce the anxiety level? Well, I do have like, well, for, for parents, first of all, because I know parents, that's the one thing that, you know, they are having a hard time with. Uh, if the parents notice any of this, I would say talk it out. That's the first thing. Um, when a kid is expressing these feelings of anxiety, validate their feelings, you know, tell them their experience or whatever they're doing, let them know, okay, you, you hear them and you understand what they're going through and then appreciate what they're saying, you know, like tell them, appreciate the courage that they have for actually asking for help and talking about it and then refer the kid out. Um, for anxiety, it, it depends what the child is feeling. Um, what kind of anxiety? Like I said, there's social anxiety, there's panic uh, disorder, um, there's OCD. So it depends what kind of anxiety the child is uh, experiencing, but we do have a lot of coping skills that we can provide and practice with them. Um, so I, like I said, again, refer, refer and refer. We do have uh, apps available also um, that have uh, coping strategies that kids could use. One of them is a uh, calm harm. And I know Kaiser also has one. Um, and so, like I said, you could always reach out to us. Um, I want to be available for the parents, hopefully in the mornings, um, so they can give us a call. We, if they have any questions, we can give them resources um, available to them and their families. I just really encourage um, parents to give us a call. We can give a lot of information, um, reach out. Uh, we have a lot of information on different topics. Um, and like the mother said of the child, social interaction is very important and it's affecting these students a lot. And so it's important for them to have somebody uh, to talk to. And like I said, I know some of them are tired of doing the video, but we can meet them in person and we can also do video or chat with them, just a check-in basis, just to make sure they're okay. I have a lot of kids that, you know, um, just want to check in. Somebody to say, hey, how are you doing? Um, every week, we'll just do a quick chat and they're really um, enjoying that, you know, um, just so I encourage them, you know, to talk and to talk about their family because, you know, Kids get affected by these things when they see it over and over again, what's going on, it affects them, especially the younger ones. I know we're talking about high school kids, but I'd say to um, 
make sure you keep an eye on the younger ones because if they're if you're watching news and you're watching all these social media and they keep seeing it over and over it, it's something that's in their head and they think it's happening every day and it could have been something that happened last week so it's very important to discuss these things with the younger ones um and it could be affecting them in different ways like behaviors especially with the little ones um you know little things like that affects them a lot and they feed off of the adult and the people that they see so if you're you know ha having a hard time and you're having signs of anxiety kids seem to sometimes do the same thing the younger ones and they pick it up so it's important just to give us a call if you have any questions and we can definitely do referrals or resources that you can use from home yourself